Imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the night of Ashura. You step out of your tent, you see people leaving in their hundreds and thousands. For a split second, your eyes fall on the face of Muhammad Hussein. There and then you decide, Hassan, you're going to stay. Knowing full well what's going to happen the following day. Ashura comes, the 10th of Muharram. You wake up, you leave your tent. You walk up to the Imam and the Imam says to you, he gives you the choice to offer your service in any way you'd like. Where would you want to serve the most? I think I would uh, I'd ask him I'd ask him what he would want me to be where he would want me where he would want me to be I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to serve in any shape or form in any way that's why that's what I'll do if you ask him and he says again it's up to you he gives you the choice. Are you asking me if I um, in those days or like how we are now? No, no, in, in, in on those the day days, of yeah. Ashura. So whether, for example, would you go and bring water with Abdul Fadl Abbas? Would you? So um, I think the tragedy of uh, of Abdul Fadl Abbas bringing water and. Uh, him not being able to bring it for the children. It's probably the, one of the hardest things, especially the fact that I have a son now, um, two month old son and a daughter who's also two years now. And knowing the fact that there were kids those age uh, in those days, I, I, I definitely, I think I would have, I would have chosen the path of getting water for the, for the Abbas. Okay. Imagine you've had a long day at work. You come home to your wife and kids. You see your wife is frantically running around, trying to prepare fruit, food, tea, etc. Because you have a guest. You come up to her and you ask her what's going on, why are you in such a ecstatic manner? She says to you, Hassan, someone's come to see you. You ask, who is it? She says, he's waiting for you in the living room. So you come to the living room, you open the door, you walk in and you see it's Imam al Hussein salam sitting on your chair waiting for you. What would you say to him in that moment? What would you want him to say back to you? I would, would have, I would have said to him, I wish that there was more people there on the day. And I wish I was there. And I would have asked him, if I was there, would you have let me go with Al-Fadr Abbas? Or would you want me to fight? Oh, Why is Abel Fadl Abbas so dear to you? The fact that such a warrior like Abel Fadl Abbas didn't get the chance to even go towards the enemies and, and have the intention of fighting and to give the mission of bringing water for the kids in itself is a powerful, powerful message. It, it, it needs a powerful person like a Fadha Abbas to not do anything but to go get water for the kids. I mean, he must have been enraged to go and fight the enemies. But obviously, you know, when, when, if, when Imam Hussein orders you to do something, then you're going to have to do it. 
So Abu Abbas as a person, as as uh, as a as a as a brother to Imam Hussein, he he did something that I don't think anyone else would have done because he was literally the last man standing after Imam Hussein or before Imam Hussein. And the fact that he didn't go fight and he was told to get water instead is it's amazing. So now you've spoke with Imam Hussein, you've had a discussion, you've had a talk, etc. It's time for him to leave your house. What would you say to him in, in farewell? What would you want him to turn and say back to you as he's stepping outside of the door of your house? I would ask him for advice. Advice on what path and who, who to follow because the, the Shia Umm right now is, is, is not in a good situation. I mean, we have uh, so many scholars pretending to be who they shouldn't be, pretending to say that they know Imam Mahdi. And we have so many of our brothers and sisters following the wrong person. Uh, especially in the West, we have a lot of scholars not doing what they should be doing. Um, so I, w I would like advice because we, we want to go through the right path and if we're following the wrong people, then how are we going to reach our goal, which is entering heaven and meeting, meeting the Ahlul Bayt so at the beginning I asked you if you were there 1400 years ago which area would you want to participate in? Now having hindsight it might be easy to say I would try to stop this or I would go to the aid of this person or I would try to protect this person from this calamity falling upon their head but in this day and age we have an Imam also, who might not be with us, but is present amongst us. And in a way, he's given us the chance by not being here to volunteer our services in any way we like to him. So what do you think we should do to aid the Imam of our time? How do you think we should help him? Do you think we've done enough to help the Imam of our time? I think um, doing as much so of uh, making medallas is not enough nowadays. You know, commemorating the deaths or the birth anniversaries of our Imams, or companions or, uh, or ladies of, of the universe, like Sayyid Fatima or Lady Khadija salam. Um, it's not enough nowadays, so I think we lack in uh, doing more uh, seminars, multi-faith multi seminars, conferences, and um, we don't see many of those. Um, I think the word of Imam Hussein isn't out there. I think the, the negative word is out there, but not the positive. Well, well, there is, but not as much as I think Imam Mahdi would like. And um, my opinion, um, we need more. One of, one of the main things is um, we need more English channels because the media is a big, big influence in the world right now. And the fact that we have what three, four, five, a handful of of English TV channels is disappointing. And uh, I think we should uh, go through that route. Ayna baqiyatullah, ayna baqiyatullah, ayna baqiyatullah. Ala kiraz khudai, khuda. Oh,
سنور غیر نواییم خدا کنم